everything that has breath. So take a moment, put your hand in front of your mouth and blow. If you felt that, that's a command directly to you. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, God. We give you the highest praise because you're worthy, God. Hallelujah, God. There's no other God like you. So when you tell us to praise your name and lift you up and worship you, we will. We don't want the rocks to cry out for us. Hallelujah, because you've been too good. You've been so faithful. You've been so kind. You loved me when I didn't love myself. You loved me when I didn't deserve to be loved. You laid down your life for me. And so this morning I will enter into your presence. Into your courts with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Enter in. Enter in. Enter in. Enter in. We welcome you, God. You're welcome here. Let your spirit fall. Hallelujah. We want to feel your presence. So welcome to worship, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh God, we thank you that the sun is shining this morning. And we thank you that it's a cool breeze. But God, even if it wasn't, we, would want, we just want to thank you. Because you've been too good to us. Listen, I want you to raise your hand if God has not been good to you. Yep, see? Mm -mm. See, we so quick. Think about the goodness of God and the mercies of God and all that he has done for you. And if you're in this building, if you're joining us in the cyber sanctuary, or if you on the dial-in uh, number, think back or think about yesterday. Think about this morning. What God has done for you. How he woke you up this morning. Don't take that for granted. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. He has supplied all of your need thus far. So I'm going to worship him for me. And what he's done for me. And you just going to have to worship him for you. For what he's done for you. Because my God. My God has been good to me. My God woke me up this morning. My God started me on my way. My God gave me a sound mind. My God gave me activities of my lips. My God forgave me for the sins I committed on yesterday. He gave me brand new mercies this morning. He covered me with his loving kindness. My God. My God. My God. Oh, hallelujah, God. We love you, God. We thank you, God, because you've been so good. You've been so kind, and you've been faithful. And so when we think of you, God, we get excited. When we think about what you've done for us personally, I don't need you to praise God for me. Praise God for what he's done for you. Praise God for what he's done for you. Because you don't know my story. And I don't know yours. But I serve a God who is good. Woo, hallelujah. And who loves me. With an everlasting love. And an unfailing love. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. So as we enter into worship, 
If you have a birthday in April or a celebrated anniversary, we want to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to you. Hallelujah. If you're experiencing a little cold or cough, cough, get a mask. If you need one, raise your hand. We'll bring one to you. My sisters who are in the building on May 25th, Saturday, May 25th, we are going to kick off the Level Up series. Amen? Amen. 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 Sisters, you didn't hear me. Amen. We are going to kick off the Level Up series on Saturday, May 25th from 10 to 1 p.m. Baby, it's going to be an experience. It's going to be ministry at a whole nother level. We're going to take care of your personal needs and we're going to feed you so you don't sit there, you're not sitting there hungry and worry about your stomach growling. We're going to feed you and then we're going to minister to your mind, your heart, your soul, and your spirit. And when we kick off this first series, it's going to be faith and finance. And this season, hallelujah, what God is doing he want us to be in our right mind. He want us to have our minds right and our money right. Amen. Amen. Because he has some things to do with the women, for the women of God. He is going to use us in a mighty way. And everything he's going to do is going to be accelerated. Amen. So next Sunday, registration will be open. Tell your girlfriends. Bring the young ladies in your family because we are going to hear from the Lord. Amen. 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 And so I don't know about you. It's a little warm in here. Amen. I don't know what you came to do today. But I came to praise his name. I came to lift him up. I came to sing and shout. And I came to give him glory. Come on, let's praise the Lord in this place. Let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. We came to lift up Jesus. Did anybody else come to lift up our Father today? To lift up our King. He is awesome. He is holy. Oh, I wish I wasn't by myself. He is sovereign. He is great. He is mighty. He's a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, let's do it. Come on, can we pump our fists like this? Oh. Let's do it right here. Say, Lord, you're mine. 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 Lord to my 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 The moon and the 
to do it morning gently rest upon my heart like the dew in the morning gently rest upon my heart can you help us sing that today like the dew Rest upon my heart. Like the dew in like the, the morning, the the morning. Oh, oh. gently rest upon my heart. Like the dew, like the dew in the morning, yeah, yeah. gently rest upon my heart. Rest upon my heart. Here we go. And we say, Rest, Rest, Jesus. Say, Rest, Jesus. Say, Rest, Rest, Jesus. Do it like the do in the morning. Say, Rest, Rest, Jesus. Rest, Jesus. Say, Rest, Rest, Jesus. Do Do it 
time you open up your eyes in the morning, God has given you a fresh supply of new mercies. One thing we, I love about our God is our God doesn't deal with stale stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't give us stale stuff or used stuff, but every morning he gives us new mercies, brand new mercies we see every morning because he shows up just as he fed Israel. In the wilderness, every morning when they woke up, the dew that was on the ground became manna from heaven. The quail came down for them and flew just low enough. For, they didn't have to do a whole lot of, they have a whole lot of effort. They, they could just reach up and snatch them down. Because God was supplying the needs of his people. And when we sing that song, I want you to understand it's about God's provision. It's about God's presence every single day in our lives. He saturates our lives with his presence. Every time we open up the, the, our eyes and see the sun shining it, it is God's presence, God reminding us that he's still God. Every time we look up in the sky and the moon is still hanging in the sky, it's a reminder that he's still God. Every time that we breathe in and out, 
It's a reminder that he's still God and that he created us in his image. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We can't understand and doctors are still practicing medicine to try to understand how this body works and how it does what it does. Scientists, in all of their years, in all of their efforts, they have learned some things, but they can't figure this thing out because there's only one that, that knows us inside and out. There's only one that knows how and why everything works, why he positioned our, our eyes and our nose, our ears, our heart, our digestive system the way that he did. There's one, and that is the manufacturer, the one who created us in his image, the one who formed us from the dust of the ground. He knows, and so I want to just say to you today, the one who created you, the one who manufactured you, the one who formed you, he knows everything about you, and he can fix whatever's broken. He can heal whatever is hurting. What doctors can't figure out, what tests can't discover, I want you to know the God of our salvation, the one who sits high and looks low, he knows all about us. He knows all about us. He knows all about us. He knows all about our trouble. He hears our faintest cry. And one thing I love about our God is he will answer. By and by. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. If you believe he will, give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 We are in the midst of a great worship experience. Grateful and thankful to God for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and all that he's going to do in our lives. We want to welcome our, uh, our online audience in our cyber sanctuary, we thank you for worshiping with us today. Those of you that are at home because you can't come out, we are grateful and thankful that you, we are able to connect with you right where you are. And for those uh, who are just deciding to worship with us because you, 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 not, you didn't know where you were going to go and you decided, you were scrolling through your social media feeds and, and you saw something and you decided you was going to hang out with us for the first time, worshipers with us, thank you. Thank you. Hang around for the remainder of the worship. And when you're in, in, in town or if you're in the area, come out and worship with us in person here at Bethel Baptist Church of Chicago Heights at 1303 Fifth Avenue. Amen. And for those that are in the building, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're grateful and thankful for each and every one of you that are here today. We, uh, we truly thank God for what God is doing. I want you to know that you're in the right place. I want you to know that God is moving. God is alive and well here at Bethel. And the best for us is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. Let's give it up for our first lady. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And she, she announced that, that coming up um, in May, um, that there's going to be women's ministry. Um, there's a women's ministry event that's kicking off. Uh, we are grateful for... Um, having sponsorship, and she'll speak to that um, in the near future um, that, that will support and partner with us in this effort. And we're always looking for opportunities to um, expand ministry and partner with others outside of the church to carry out the mission of the church. Amen? Because at the end of the day, I want us to understand that it's all about the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. It's all about the kingdom of God. And when, what, I, I, when she mentioned that it's going to focus on faith and finances. Yes. Amen. Um, it's so important, people of God, that, that we get it together when it comes to our finances. Yes. Because we are in a day and time where the wealth gap is not decreasing. But yet it is expanding amen the wealth 
gap. It's expanding. What that means is the rich are getting richer and the poor is getting poorer. When we look at wealth among the African American community, while we make up about 14% of the population of the United States of America, we only represent about 4% of the wealth in the United States of America. I'll say that one more time. While we make up about 14% of the population of the United States of America, we only represent about 4% of the wealth in the United States of America. And what that says is that it's not that we don't make money. It's that we are consumers. Uh, we don't build wealth while others are building wealth and passing wealth on to the next generation so that it stays in their family, stays in their community, and that wealth continues to grow. They don't have to really tap into their, their wealth. They can live off the interest on their wealth. We have to have a mindset change. We have to shift in our thinking, and we have to recognize that that we have to get our finances in order in order to do that. Nobody cares about how fancy your car is. Let's just keep it real. I, 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 look, look, I, I'm just going, I'm going to come right down your street. Who cares about what kind of bag you carry? Because you can have the fanciest bag and the popular name on, on your bag, but, but if you don't have life insurance, if we got to pass the hat when it's time for your funeral, I'd rather you sell that bag and buy insurance. I'm talking about a mindset shift. I'm talking about shifting in our thinking, expanding our thinking, and looking at things differently. And while, while, while we're spending all of our money being consumers in a society that is finding ways to, because we are, we, we are one of the biggest consumer groups in the country. And it seems that everyone else realizes that except, that's why when you go to get that, that, that fried chicken that you love so much and that, that, that fish that you love so much, that's why it's other folk that don't look like you frying it because they know that you'll buy it, but you won't build a business to be the provider, but you'll be the consumer. You'll be satisfied with going to 14, 15 different fish and chicken spots that, that's being served by folk that don't look like us and taking that money and going outside of our community investing in other communities that build up their schools and, and, and put their children through college. Oh, we, we, we pay for college education. It's just not our own kids' college education. We're paying for it. We're paying for a whole lot of folks' mortgages. We're paying for other folks' insurance because we're the consumers as a people group, we have become satisfied with flossing. Do they still use flossing? We're, we're more concerned about our drip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, but guess what? While, while, while we are flossing and we're concerned about our drip, all we're doing is funding the life and lifestyle of others while we're expanding the wealth gap. And I believe that what we're doing in the space of economic development and moving our communities and our people in a direction of ownership, creativity and entrepreneurship, and starting your own business, expanding your business idea. In this room are people with some great ideas, vision, some opportunities that, that, that you've been sitting on. 
you got a recipe that should be on the, on, on the grocery store shelves. But you haven't thought about marketing it because you can't market a dab of this and a pinch of that. You, you got to be able to to scale that up in a way that you can take what you do in your kitchen and expand that in a way that you're able to provide thousands or millions of what you produce in your kitchen without losing the integrity, the character, the taste, and the texture of what you produce in your kitchen. And it takes research and development to get to that point where you can take a concept of what you're able to produce in your kitchen because those greens are delicious and folk will buy them. I haven't gone to a store and found hot water cornbread. But, 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 but I believe that there's some folk in this room that can, 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 can make it and, 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 if, and, and if your family love it, guess what? It's some, it's some other families that'll love it. All you got to do is learn how to scale that up, package it, market it, distribute it, and guess what? You got something that could transform your life and generations to come, something that you can hand on, pass on to your family. But as a people group, we have failed to think like that. But, and, and more importantly, we have failed to even pass on the, the recipes. So when you die, the recipe die. It doesn't have to. Write it down. Think about how you can scale it up. Think, think about how you can make that into a business. I've been talking to my wife about this. I'm going to go. I know where her recipes are. I've been, I've, I've been, I've been telling her for the longest that, 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 that her red velvet cupcake recipe uh, should be on, on the shelves. If she don't, if she don't do it... <laughs> Man... Revs, revs, red velvet cupcakes. I'm telling y'all, get ready. I'm telling you, if she don't do something with it, y'all going to look up, y'all going to go in the store, it's going to be a picture of me. Revs, red velvet cupcakes coming to a store near you. <laughs> we have some things. We have some things that we have available to us, accessible to us. You have, like the woman that I talked about last week in the Bible where she was asked by the man of God, what do you have in your house? You got it. It's in your house right now. It's in your house right now. It's in your house right now. Your next, your future, your deliverance, your financial freedom. Your breakthrough is in your house. It's in your mind. It's in your heart. People of God, it's time for us to go get it. Amen. It's time for us to stop talking about it and start being about it. It's time for us to stop complaining about where we are and complaining about the wealth, ga wealth gap expanding and figure out how we get on the other side. How do we get on the other side? Because if we can get on the other side, then we can push from both sides. And that's how we can decrease the wealth gap from expanding. And so I want you to know that in this room, those of you that are watching online, in your house, in your mind, are ideas. And, and we're creating um, a small business development center that will work with you to take your thoughts, your ideas from just a vision and a thought and a dream mm -hmm. to put it together into, into a concept mm -hmm. and figure out how to scale it and how to market it mm -hmm. and how to produce it in a way that what you have in your heart and in your home can transform your life. And as a people, we have to do a better job at capitalizing, and I want you to know capitalism is not a bad word. 
because at the end of the day, we are, we live in a capitalist society. We just have become satisfied and okay with everyone else capitalizing on our investment in their lives, and we're not capitalizing on our own resources and abilities. Amen? amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Our God provides like he provided the dew. He has provided your breakthrough, your financial miracle. Having or doing come deeper. Amen. If it's worth it, you're going to have to do a little work for it. Amen. And it doesn't happen overnight. Amen. You all hear me talking all the time about what, where we are today and what's happening in this community and what's happening in the region now uh, because of the work that we're leading started over 10 years ago. And, and we're just now getting ready to see the fruit of our labor of 10 years. And so uh, the, the beauty is your, your vision, your concept, somebody might be saying, well, I'm, I don't even know if I have 10 years left. Well, what are you going to do with what you do have? Amen. What are you going to do with what you do have? Even if you only had a year to live, what are you going to do with that year? Yeah. Amen. Make it count. Amen. Make it count. And no, you can't go back and get the time that's been lost. But what are you going to do with today? We say, give us this day our daily bread. Guess what? Today is the day that you have. This is the day that the Lord has made. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to complain or are you going to rejoice and be glad? You're going to complain and be sad or be rejoice and be glad. It's our choice. We make a choice what we're going to do. You make a choice of what you're going to do with your life, your future, and what God has blessed you with. And I don't care how young you are or how old you are. I don't care about your level of education. I want you to know God can use anybody. Madam C.J. Walker, read about that, 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 that black woman who, who, who made it happen in her kitchen and became a historian both in her accomplishments and her wealth, and that could be you. There are so many others that I could reference, but I want us to begin thinking beyond where we are and I want you to know that what you have and what you believe is the fuel for your future amen, amen. don't get stuck in thinking that you at the end of the road and or or everything all the odds are stacked up against you I love when the odds are stacked up against me it make my victory more more impactful Amen. It's more dramatic when, 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 when you David up against Goliath. But if you was Goliath and defeated David, nobody's impressed with that because there's an expectation for you to defeat David. But when David defeats Goliath, that's a story for us to talk about because according to society, David was not supposed to defeat Goliath. And according to society, you are not supposed to overcome the, the cycle of poverty that has reigned over your life. According to society, you're not supposed to be able to, to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, create something, and build wealth, and transform your community and your, your region and your family, and pass something on to your children and your but we, we like to quote the scripture that, 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 that we'll leave an inheritance. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children and his children's children to the fourth generation. We quote the scripture, but we don't live it. 
Because some of us are okay with not even leaving the, uh, an insurance policy to bury our, our, for us, our children to bury us. We'd rather just leave them with the debt. But the scripture says that a good man, and y'all know, I know y'all like equality, so a good woman, <laughs> leaves an inheritance to their children's children, to, to the fourth generation. And so people of God, we have to think that way. We have to think that way. I'm going to drop something on you all right now before I go into the word of God because I, as I have been preparing for um, this message, um, God has exposed me to something that is happening and getting ready to happen that um, as a people group, um, we have to be ready for it. And if not, Everyone else is going to benefit, and, 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 and we're going to wonder what happened. One of the fastest, well, no, not one of, the fastest growing market in the world, not just the United States of America, but the fastest growing market in the United States of America right now is artificial intelligence. And so many have um, been studying this to see the growth of artificial intelligence and how it has just exploded with a company called OpenAI who uh, launched just over a year or so ago uh, ChatGPT that has really blown people away and has been, I'm talking in the first two months, chat GPT had over a hundred million subscribers, folk who had bought in, companies who had started to adopt uh, and use chat GPT to advance their companies and do everyday kind of work because this is an AI that studies patterns and behaviors and mimics the human brain to uh, learn from patterns to be able to answer questions almost as a human brain would based on studying patterns. And so while many people have become multimillionaires because of investing in OpenAI and, and ChatGPT, I'm learning that right now that there is an emerging um, version of AI that's going to make ChatGPT look like the eight track cassette player and so I want to make sure that I say this in all of your getting get understanding and study to show yourself approved a workman that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and we should do that when it comes to the scripture but we should also do that when it comes to our lives. And so I'm saying to you right now, there is a new version of AI. The gentleman that is responsible for chat GPT is a gentleman by the name of Sam Altman. And Sam Altman, if you all, some, some may remember in the news, um, he was fired by the board of OpenAI. He was fired by the board and because some of the folk on the board didn't like how he was doing things. They didn't agree with the direction he was taking the company. And so they got together and voted him out, fired him. Well, after they did that, 
there were people who were inside the company, who worked for the company, who understood what he was working on, understood his vision, and they decided, well, if you all get rid of him, then we all are going to retire or we're going to quit in mass. And so with that happening, the company was, would be in peril. Well, after all of that happened, four days later, after firing Sam Altman, do your homework, check, check the stats, get the check the receipts. Four days later, they hired Sam Altman back. And the same folk that said, if y'all don't hire him back, we're going to quit. They said, and we want those folk on the board that wanted him fired, we want them out. So four days later, after being fired, four days later, Sam Altman is back. And now, after he's back, the folk that fired him was out. Well, there was, Sam was work, working on something that folk, some people on the board of directors didn't know and didn't understand. But the people who were working with him closely knew. And so, there is a new version of AI that is getting ready to emerge. And many have, over the years, have said that it will be 50 years. Some have reduced it down to 20 years. Some are saying within the next five years that this new version of AI. But there are many now who are saying that it's going to happen in less than three years. There are some who are saying that it's already available. And this, is, this form of AI is called, um, gen is artificial general intelligence, AGI, artificial general intelligence. And again, I'm sharing this with you all because at the end of the day, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. What you do with this is up to you. I'm not telling you what to do with it. I know what I'm going to do with it. So artificial general AI. So as I shared with you a moment ago, AI or chat GTP or GPT, I always jack that up, um, is about the mimicking the human brain and gathering data and memorizing it so that the computer then, based on all of the input and all of this information, can now start to pull real quickly those thoughts, those, that information that's out there in the, um, on the internet and in, 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 in cyberspace. They can pull that, inf computers can pull that information, and that's why I can ask my computer something right now, and it'll have an answer for me just like that. Well, what artificial general intelligence does is something that has never been done before, and what Sam Altman discovered was a way for AI to do elementary math, elementary math. For most of us, we're like, what? What's, what's big about elementary math? I can do math, elementary math. Well, for a computer using artificial intelligence to be able to do this, it's not about taking information that's out there. It's now about taking math equations and being able to solve them at, in record time. Taking complicated equations, questions, and issues and being able to quickly 
calculate and formulate an answer, this will transform our world. Because what many scientists have been doing over the years to study and understand and try to come up with cures for various diseases, AI will be able to do that in record time. What I'm saying with this is this technology has not been launched or out there for the public and it's coming. And just like we're, you hear people talking about AI right now, AI and chat GPT will be a conversation of the past when AGI hits the scene. For those who want to be a part of what is next, do your homework and look for opportunities to invest what you decide to invest in this emerging technology that's coming. There are many people who are going to do it. And the kind of growth that is anticipated is unprecedented. Again, I'm not telling anyone what to do or to go and do. Do your homework. And if you find that you've done your homework, and what Pastor Blackwell has stood up here and shared with you all, what you do with it is up to you. I know what I'm going to do with it. And I'm going to say amen to that. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> See, what I just shared with you all is probably one of the most valuable pieces of information that you will get from an economic and a wealth building, generational wealth transferring perspective. And one of the things that led me to share this with you is because as I expand my network, as I expand my relationships, I'm exposed to information that I wouldn't have access to if I was satisfied with being locked into my little world of folk that look like me, talk like me, dress like me, vote like me, believe like me. But when we open ourselves up to build relationship and, and to learn what other people are doing and to allow others into your world and, and allow others to welcome you into their world, we get to learn about things that we wouldn't learn about otherwise. And so it leads me into today's message that we will find, I'm using a couple passages for the basis of today's message. Uh, Isaiah 40 and verse 31, along with Exodus 19 and verse 4. Isaiah 40 and 31. Those are scriptures. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kim. Amen. Those are scriptures that's in the Bible that we're getting ready to read from. 
that we stand, the Bible that we stand for when we read those scriptures. That's the one. That's what we're doing. I'm trying to help y'all out. I'm trying. I'm trying. There's a reason why we're standing. We honor God's word as we, we read God's word because it is holy. Exodus. I'm sorry. Isaiah 40 and 31. A very familiar passage of scripture. And while I'm going to focus in on that 31st, the first part of that 31st verse, I want you to let me start at verse 28. Right? It says, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Verse 30. Even the youths shall faint, young folk, will fall out, give up, throw in the towel. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, young but tired. And the young men shall utterly fall. But... Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. But those who wait, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're male or female, those that wait on the Lord while, while the young are falling out, Throwing in the towel, giving up. While they're fainting, those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like, like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. From that passage of scripture, I want for the next 24 minutes preach from the message, birds of a feather, birds of a feather, spirit of the living God, we thank you. We praise you and we honor you. You are an awesome God. You're absolutely amazing, God. You have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. God, you have opened doors that no man can shut. You have closed doors no man can open. You have healed our bodies. You've delivered us from our past. You have broken the curse that has been on our lives. And we thank you, God, that you have set us free from the hand of the enemy. We thank you now, God, that we, through this new life we have in you, are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think because of the power that's at work in us through the person of your Holy Spirit because you promised to never leave us nor forsake us, but you left us with the comforter, the, the one that you promised that would be with us, that would lead us and guide us into all truth the comforter the holy spirit that resides in us he is with us and so god we say thank you today because it's not by power and it's not by might but it's by your spirit saith the lord and we just thank you right now for filling us with your spirit we thank you for ordering our steps for you said in your word that the steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered of the lord and he delights in their way god we thank you that you can find delight in our way as we, as, as you order our steps, as we seek your face, as we seek to be uh, your ambassadors here on this earth, the light 
of the world and the salt of the earth. God, we pray right now that you use us for your glory. And God, we pray that it's none of us, but all of you, God. We pray that we don't take any of your glory for ourselves, God, but we thank you right now, God. It is your, your, you that have opened up our eyes and given us understanding. And you told us in your word, in all of our getting to get understanding. And so, God, we seek to understand what you're doing today in our world and in our society, in our church, in our lives. We seek to understand, and even when we don't understand, we throw ourselves on the mercy of the court and we say, Lord, have mercy on us and order our steps and, 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 and lead us and guide us when we don't know which way to go, God. We pray right now that you would have your way in our lives. What we don't know, teach us your way. What we can't see, open up the eyes of our understanding. And we'll put our hope and our trust in you because we know you'll never fail us. In Jesus' name, let all of God's people say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Birds of a feather. Now, 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 as I say birds of a feather, uh, I believe that most folk in the room uh, knows what comes after that, Mother Hardiman. Uh, uh, I believe that most folk in this room, if they hear me say birds of a feather, there are many that's going to say, birds of a feather flock together. And, and that is something that we have used in our society. That's a quote that we have used in our society to, to, to signify that that that. The people you surround yourself with are typically folk who are going to share common interests, common uh, 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 experiences, something that you all have in common that draws you all together. So if you have a bunch of fools in your circle, if you have a bunch of broke folk in your circle, if you have a bunch of negative people in your circle, if, if, if you have liars and, and gossipers and, 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 and folk who don't have integrity in your circle, then you may want to take a step back and, and do some self-reflection to make sure that, that, that it's not just the people that's in your circle because birds of a feather. One thing I've learned about folk who don't want to live godly, they, they don't want to hang around folk that live godly. What I learned about folk that don't believe in living holy, don't want to be around folk that live holy. And if they are, they want to be critical of folk who, who want to live holy because they accuse you of judging them because, because, because at the end of the day, you all know how it goes. I, I don't want to look at somebody that, 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 that reminds me me of who I'm not and so what happens is when you start to do things when you start to grow when you start to expand when you start to think different talk different when when your appetite changes the folk that 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 you have been comfortable around and the folk that have been comfortable around you somebody's going to get uncomfortable because because you're breaking away from what what made it comfortable and 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 you create making it uncomfortable because I don't want to be around you because here you come again talking about your god and and the scriptures and what God can do and I don't want to talk about that because I just want to thank God for the stuff that I get and you want to thank God for waking you up this morning you want to thank God for starting you on your way you want to thank God for, 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 for your lunch and you want to thank God for your job and you want to thank God for your family and your children you want to thank God for your health and strength. You want to thank God for all of this little stuff. I just want to thank God for my car and my house and my Birkin bag. And I just want to thank God for my stuff. You want to thank God for everything. And you're making it uncomfortable. What I want you to understand, people of God, is that birds of a feather 
flock together. When I use that term or that, that mechanism, birds of a feather, it, is, it comes from um, a, it's a rhetorical device. Um, it's a rhetorical device where the dominant, well, where the subordinate clause, subordinate clause is implied and the main clause, it implies the main clause without being mentioned. And so when I say birds of a feather, you automatically know that what's coming next or what belongs, I don't have to say it for you to know it. When I say birds of a feather, you automatically know flock together. It's called uh, an anapodotin. And an anapodotin is that, 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 device, that rhetorical device that I just described, and I'll share with you some other examples of that that I believe that most of us in the room will be able to identify. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Amen? I don't have to say do as the Romans do. All I need to say is, when in Rome, because what I've just done by doing that I stated the subordinate, and it implies the main clause. All right, maybe that don't help you all. If the shoe fits, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Now we get somewhere. Now this is my crowd. Now I'm getting to my crowd. All right, all right. If the shoe fits, wear it, because I don't have to say the rest of it, because you already know. When the cat's away... The mice will play. What they don't know? Oh, yeah, I'm getting to my people now. I'm really getting to my people now. I'm really getting to the... Now, now this is going to tell me if I, if, if, if I got the right crowd here. And those of you at home, I think y'all my people too. So, so, so just stay with me. What's understood? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm with my people now. What's understood don't need to be explained. Amen. I'm, I got one. I got one more, and, and and be careful on this one. Let me let me just warn y'all. Let me give y'all a preference. Be careful on this one. Be careful on this one, uh, because it, it's another one of those anapodotins. But let me let me just say this. Uh, uh, don't write a check. Don't you? Da, 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 da. See what I'm saying? We in church, y'all can't say the whole thing. I tried to warn y'all. I, I I tried to warn y'all, and y'all got folk in here cussing in the church. I don't understand. I don't, I just don't understand. <laughs> but, 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 but you get what I'm saying. So, so you don't have to say it all the time. You don't have to say everything because birds of a feather flock together. The folk that are around you that are aware and that understand, are go you don't have to say everything for them to get it. You want to surround yourself with people who are going to help you go higher and do better and be better. You don't want to surround yourself with folk that are, that are stagnant and want you to remain stagnant with them. You don't want to surround yourself with people who ain't going anywhere and don't want to see you go anywhere. You got to be willing to have the courage to break away because we're in the season and in the time that God is doing something where the status quo will not be accepted, where you cannot keep doing it the way you always have done it and think that you're going to get to the next level, next realm, and next dimension. And therefore, we have to check our surroundings. We got to check our we got to check our crowd. We got to check who we're rolling with. We got to check the people who are making deposits in our lives. Because who's depositing in your life and, and, and who's influencing your life is the circle of people that you surround yourselves with. And so birds of a feather flock together.
When we talk about birds of a feather, here in this passage in Isaiah, um, in this 31st verse, we see the reference to the eagle. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And so what the prophet Isaiah is saying here is that, that, that there's this period of time where things aren't going to look real good. It's going to look like everything might be even falling apart. And there are many who will throw in the towel. There are many who are going to forget about God, renounce God, who turn away from God, walk away from a relationship with Jesus Christ, walk away from the church and be critical and hypercritical of the church. And in some cases of what we call organized religion and everything else all together. And there are folk that will be in that group because birds of a feather. But the question is, whose report will you believe? Where will you be? What group will you be a part of? And what, I, what Isaiah was saying is that, that some things was getting ready to happen that, that was going to cause some people to, to give up. That He said the youths, the youths, young people, they supposed to be the strongest. They, they supposed to be the smarter. They supposed to have the wit, but, but there's coming a time where even the youths shall faint and be weary. Are you around a bunch of young people that's tired all the time? May not work, and if they do work, just drain. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. You got young people dying of heart attacks today at an alarming rate. I'm talking about athletes that, that have been active and, 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 and playing sports, and many who uh, eat well, dying of heart attacks. The youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord, they, young and old, rich, poor, black, white, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, they that wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength. I want you to understand, people of God, we can't give in to what the society is telling us to do. We have to stand on the word of God, the promises of God. We have to operate with integrity. We have to trust God even when we can't trace God. We have to stand in, and, and, and stay committed to our walk and our relationship with God even when it is tempting to walk away. Even when it's enticing to walk away and it's lucrative and financially beneficial to walk away, we have to wait upon the Lord because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You might get weak along the way. You might, you might be, lose some things along the way. You might suffer pain along the way. You may deal with some heartache along the way. You may deal with some suffering along the way. But if you wait on the Lord... You shall renew your strength. Your strength will be renewed like the eagle. You shall mount up on wings as the eagle. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed at, at how many folk who, who are, are, are much older than I am, but, but they are healthy and, and active and, and, and able to do things that many young folk aren't able to do because they have taken the time. They've invested in themselves and, and, and they're, they're staying active. And I, we have many of those folk that are right here in our congregation because you don't let your mind just sit. You don't let your body just sit. You, you, you are about your father's business. And I want you to understand, if you wait on the Lord, you shall renew your strength. You shall mount up 
on the wings. I want to talk for a few minutes. I'm, I want to talk for a few minutes about the eagle. When we talk about the eagle, the eagle is one of the most majestic birds. Um, the eagle is at the top of the food chain when it comes to birds. There are some things that I want us to understand and know about the eagle. Um, some surface things like the fact that the United States of America, the eagle is one of our national symbols adopted in 1782 um, as one of our national symbols, the eagle, because of the eagle's strength and, and, and the fact that the eagle is at the top of the food chain. And, and the United States of America, that's how we want to be identified as, as a nation. And so when we think about the eagle, we think about the eagle as our national bird. In addition to that, the eagle has the ability to fly at 75 miles per hour. 75 miles per hour. On average, the eagle is going to be 30 to 40 inches tall from... From, from, from the floor or from the, from the top of his head to his tail, four, 30 to 40 inches is the size. And the wingspan of an eagle is going to be seven to eight feet. Seven to eight feet is the wingspan of the eagle. That's, that's, that's how big, that's how wide the eagle's wings are. That's why throughout the scripture we see the scripture referring to the eagle and how he will hide us under the shadow of the Almighty, that, that we'll find refuge under, under the eagle's wings, that, that we can mount up on wings as eagles. Let me I want you to understand, God knew the power and majesty and strength of this particular bird. There are some things that I, I learned about the eagle is that, you know, especially in particular the bald eagle, the bald eagle is known for the white, the white head, right? I didn't know that they're not born with that white head. But, but after they're four or five years old and they come to maturity, that's when they, that's when they have that white head. They start out with, with the, 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 their head is the same color as the rest of the feathers on their body. But maturity brings that, that, that and, and time allows that head to, to become white. And I want you to understand this. This is what I saw as I was studying this and preparing this. I want us to understand that maturity brings wisdom. Maturity brings experience. Uh, 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 maturity says that, 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 that we've been through something, that we've learned something. And I want us to understand that as believers and where God is getting ready to take us, we need to be surrounded with people who have some maturity, we should want to be spiritually mature. Yeah. Now, I'm not just talking about age-wise, but I'm talking about in the spirit. We want to be spiritually mature. We don't want to be babes. Still arguing about trivial stuff, still complaining and whining and, and needing a, a pacifier or a bottle to shut us up or somebody to, to rock us and pat us on our back and, 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 to, and to make us feel better so that we can just shut up. You all know how we do, babies. We'll, we will sing. We'll dance. We will turn the TV on. We will do whatever we have to do just to get that baby to be quiet. You don't want to surround yourself with folk that you got to pacify just to get them to shut up. You want to be around people who are spiritually mature because birds of a feather. You want to be around people who are growing in their walk, who are growing in their knowledge of the word of God. People who love God more than they love church. People who love God more than they love religion. People who love God more than they love being right. People who love God more than they love their titles and positions. You want to surround yourselves with people who know something you don't know. But here's what I want you to also understand, people of God, that I don't care who you find yourself around, you know something that they don't know. So don't ever walk into a room as if you don't know anything. 
Don't walk into a room as if you don't have something to contribute. I don't care how much they have to contribute. I don't have, care how powerful they are. I don't care how much they possess or what title they have. You have something to offer anybody you walk into a room with. If the President of the United States walk into the room right now, guess what? I know that I have something that he needs. And no doubt he got something that I need. But I'm not going to walk in the room as if I don't have anything to offer. Let me tell you all something. I have a number of mentors in my life. I have a number of people that I learn from even to this day. And I, I've always done that. I always kept some mature folk. And my wife, you know, she laugh at me because she say, all your friends are old. <laughs> and, 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 and I always, I was that guy, you know. I, I always hung around older people. And, and, and I was, a, I'm an old soul is what they call me. I'm an old soul. I'm good with that. I'm good with that because, because that has put me in a room with folk that can speak their mind and folk that don't care about how I'm going to feel about what they're going to say. That, that's going to let me know what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. And so when, when I think about that, you know, and, and, and I, I, yeah, I'm surrounded with, 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 with folk who uh, in many cases are much older than I am, but, but I've learned, and I, one of my mentors... Uh, and I won't call her name right now, but, but, but I, I reach out to her often, and I, we talk, and uh, I get some advice. But I was calling her last week about something, and she said to me, she said, you're used to looking up, and you need to learn to look over. <laughs> what she was saying to me, is that what you're asking me right now tells me that you got everything that you need and you're looking up to somebody for something that they need from you. And I'm saying to each of us, I want you to look at your life and I want you to understand that, that, that you have something to offer. God has placed in you power. God has placed in you knowledge. God has placed in you wisdom. And all of it doesn't come from a textbook. All of it doesn't come from a textbook. Many and I, uh, Nothing wrong with education, but I want you to understand every single one of us has something to offer. You have something valuable. You have wisdom. You have leadership. You have experiences that the world needs access to. The world needs to know your story, know what you've been through, how you made it, why you don't look like what you've been through. They need to know that, yes, I might look like this right now, but let me tell you the hell that I had to come through in order to get to where I am right now. And guess what? Hanging around folk that don't know God, hanging around folk that don't serve God, you will never become who God created you to be. It doesn't mean that you have to cut everybody off. It just means that I can't roll with you right now because I'm on a mission. I'm on, I got something I'm working on. I'm trying to go somewhere. I'm trying to get something. I'm trying to be somebody I've never been. I'm trying to see something I've never seen. I'm trying to do something that I've never done. And I can't do that over here hanging out with ostriches. I can't do that hanging out with buzzards. Y'all know what buzzards do, right? Buzzards wait on, wait on everybody else to do the work. Bu bu buzzards wait on everybody else to do the work. Buzzards, buzzards wait on everybody to the, the other animals to kill. And then the buzzards come. And they come to feast on what's left. Stop settling for what's left. Stop settling for what's left. You, 
the, fir the, the first portion should be yours. What's live should be yours. What's, what's at the top, you, don't settle for what's at the bottom of the barrel after everybody else has picked over it and gone through it. That's why we end up in relationships that we don't belong in because instead of setting a standard and making a demand, we settle for what's left out there, what's left at the bar, what's left on Facebook, what's left trying to get into my DM, what's left. After everybody else has picked over it, you got to lift up your standard. You got to set a standard and say, no, 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 no. I'm not settling for what's left. I'm not a buzzard. I'm an eagle. That means that I soar high. I'm an eagle. The eagle makes, makes a, its home in the cleft of the rock. The eagle flies high above every other bird. The eagle has standards. Understand this. The female eagle is larger than the male eagle. And when they are courting, I know that many people will say that, that the mating process is done in the air. The mating process is not done in the air. They actually get a spot and they do their thing. <laughs> but it's the courting process that's done in the air. And I'll tell you why the courting process is done in the air. The female eagle flies as high as she can and makes the male eagle chase her. She, she forces him to pursue her. She's not chasing after him. And there's a reason why she's not chasing after him. Because she's not looking for a boyfriend or a one night stand. She's looking for somebody that's going to be there for the long haul. She's looking for somebody that's going to last and be there for a lifetime. And if you aren't willing to pursue me, then you're not worthy of me. And so the female eagle flies high and forces the male to pursue her. And that process happens over and over. She don't, she don't just give in real quick. I'm talking to somebody. He that has an ear or she that have an ear, let him hear. The female eagle forces the male eagle to chase her and pursue her. And after he has done that and she's satisfied, with his pursuit, she finally gives in and say, yeah, you the one. And what happens is she, in that, in that final experience, they fly up and they lock claws and they go into what this, this spin with their claws locked together. And they, they spin and spin as they fall to the ground. And just before crashing to the ground, they separate and fly back up. What, what she wants to know is not only that he'll pursue her, but, but she wants to know that he'll put his own life on the line for her. Birds of a feather. She wants to know that he'll put his, he'll risk his life for her. And so as they, they, they spin around locking horns, they come to the ground and they, they separate. It is after that that they go to the nest and they mate. And here's the reason why the female eagle does that is because eagles, when they marry, they marry for life. They are monogamous. Once they get married, once, once they connect, once they mate, it's them for the rest of their lives. And people of God, we have to understand that we live in a society that, that we get in this thing and, and, and we get in, 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 in until it don't fit us any longer. 
until it don't feel good. And, 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 and we'd be willing to throw it all away. But, 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 but the eagle has taught us some things. And, and, and eagle has taught me some things. And so, 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 so they lock horns. They stay together. They, they twirl down and they go to the ground and they, they separate and she know that this is the one and now they mate and they start this family. I want you to understand this, people of God. I want you to see what God is saying to you in birds of a feather. I want you to know that you don't have to settle. You don't have to compromise. And there should be, and, and understand this, men, I don't want you to think that this is, you know, just for the ladies. If she ain't making you chase, then she ain't the one. Now, 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 let me say this, you all, because I know I done shared this with you all uh, a time uh, or two, you know. When First Lady and I first met, she, she made it crystal clear to me. She's, her said, you ain't getting no cookie if I don't have your last name. I started pursuing. I start chasing. I gotta, I gotta catch up before she get this next year in. Now, I told her you ain't gonna make next year, so I started pursuing and chasing. But, but, but she set the standard. What she said is, if you want this, you're gonna have to come for me. And part of coming after me and pursuing me. I'll know if you're really in it when you put a ring on it. If you like it, then you better put a ring on it. Yeah, that right there. Yeah, yeah. But I want us to know as men, as men, we have value and worth. And we need to make sure that we set our standards high. That, 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 that we don't settle for what's, we, like, like buzzards, what's left on the ground just because it's easy to get to. It might be easy to get to, but how good is it? When everybody else done picked all over it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I, I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I, I want something fresh. I want something that I, I, I want something that, that, that has some value. I, I want that center cut. I want filet mignon. And you want to surround yourself with people in your life that's going to challenge you to be better and to go higher. In the spiritual and in the natural. You want to be around people that teaches you how to play pickleball, tennis, racquetball. To my man Ken DeLuke who introduced me to racquetball. I was, you know, I had never played racquetball, but I'm an athlete. And Ken is older than I am, like all of my friends. And, you know, I feel like I got him, you know, I'm in better shape than Ken. So, I meet you at the racquetball court and see what you got, Ken. <laughs> Needless to say, Ken got me on the racquetball court and me. 
I'm still trying to understand what happened. And how did that happen? And then COVID hit, and we couldn't go play racquetball any longer, and we haven't played since then. Not that I'm really excited to do it again either. <laughs> but I'm saying you want to surround yourself with people that's going to introduce you to something new. You don't have to be the best at it, but, but open your mind to learning something new, going somewhere new, experiencing something new, learning how to do something new, a hobby, a, 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 even if it's a career change. Open yourself up to learning something new, but surround yourself with people that's going to challenge you to be better. I, the Word of God says, iron sharpens iron. You want to you wanna surround yourself with some folk that's going to make you better that, and that you can help make them better. Because birds of a feather flock together in Jesus' name. If you don't mind, bow your heads with me. Spirit of God, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for the lesson of today. As you expand us, as you take us into new territory, Lord, as you use us in ways that you've never used us to before, I hear you saying, God, that we, we have to expand our circles. It doesn't mean we abandon the circles that we are a part of and that have been, that have got us to where we are and that have been the strength and the bedrock of our, 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 our foundation and our, our lives, the ones that have, have prayed us through and, and have pulled us through and financed us through. It's not that we forget about them, but God, you're saying we need to open up our circles and open up our hearts and our minds to allow others in to help us become who you have created us to be and destined for us to be. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that as this word goes forth, that there are people in this room, there are people online, and those who will hear and see this message that will realize that, that, that that's why you have them in the circles that they're in. And that's why they're being criticized, because their new circles don't look like the old circle. And typically... People criticize that which they don't understand and hate that which they fear. And so, God, let us not be afraid to bring others into our space and to go into the space of others and to build alliances and networks and relationships and opportunities that will br build bridges along racial lines economic lines, educational lines, access to opportunity lines, faith lines, all of our friends, all of our acquaintances, all of our business partners don't have to believe like we believe, but God, show us how to represent you regardless to what the circle looks like. Help us to hold fast to our profession of faith. Let us not be wavering or, or swayed or compromising in our faith, but let us represent you in every room that we go into. And God, expand the minds of your people. Cause us to see that we are kings and queens, that we are, we are priests. We are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, and that you are calling us to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. God, use us in this season to do exploits for you. And we recognize, God, whatever we do, it's only because of you and through you and for you that we do it in Jesus' name. All of God's people say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want to take this opportunity to extend the invitation to those who may not know Jesus as Lord and as Savior of your life. 
if you're in the room or you're watching online, I want you to know that our worship service, our, this worship experience is not to entertain. This is not a show. The reason that we gather, the reason we come together, the reason that we are who we are is because Jesus has saved us. And we recognize that there is life beyond this physical existence. And one of these days, all of us will make a transition from this life into eternity. And what is most important for all of us to know is where will you spend eternity? We will all live for eternity. Yes, every one of us will live for eternity. The question is, where will you spend eternity? Will it be in heaven with the God who created us, the Savior who died for us and rose for us? Or will it be in eternal damnation where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth? Will it be in that lake of fire that you spend eternity. I'm not trying to fe cause fear or make you afraid. I'm stating the facts. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. And it's, I, I, there are some who will make you think that there's a space in the middle. It's not. It's not. Either it's, it's going to be heaven or it's going to be hell. And we have to make a decision on earth while we're living. We have to make preparation for where we will spend eternity. Jesus said, I am the way, <coughs> the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. And so I want to extend the invitation for you to come to know Jesus as Lord and to allow him to transform your life like he did mine and like he did most that are in this room, every one of us had to make this decision. If we're saved, we had to confess our sins and believe that he was faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that doesn't mean you have to come up here and tell us all your business because our confession is not with man, it's with God. Yes, you don't have to confess to man. Jesus <coughs> eliminated that when he rose from the dead. The word of God says the veil of the temple was torn in two. In other words, there was no longer a barrier that kept us from getting and being able to go directly to God and talk to God. We didn't have to go through a priest. We didn't have to make unnecessary physical, earthly sacrifices because the ultimate sacrifice was made on Calvary when the, when the perfect lamb was slaughtered. The perfect lamb was sacrificed, and that was Jesus. And because of what he did, we now have access to eternal life, and all we have to do is confess him as Lord. And I want you to know your life will never be the same. So before you leave this building, before you log off, connect with us and let us know that you want to know Jesus as Lord and as Savior. You want to give your life to Christ. We want to pray with you, and we want to make sure that you get baptized and that everything that God has planned for your life, you receive it. We want to, you to be filled with the Holy Ghost because the water is the physical representation of the death, burial, and that resurrection. But, but it is the filling of the Holy Spirit 
It is him coming to live and dwell on the inside of us that empowers us to live holy, to live righteous, to live a better life. Because without the Holy Ghost, we will find ourselves repeating the same cycles and mistakes all of our lives. But he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Spirit of God, I pray for salvation to come into the hearts of those under the sound of my voice. I pray that the word that's being planted and has been planted, that people in this room will take this word. And through the word that they share and the testimony that they share, salvation will take place. People will come to know you, Lord Jesus, as Lord and Savior of their lives. God, this is what it's all about. And we give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Let all of God's people say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Before you leave the building, stop right up front here. I want to have a conversation. If you want to receive Jesus or if you want to make Bethel your home, you want to connect with us where you can learn and grow here, come up front and see me before you leave the building today. And for those that are online, please email, uh, message our team to let them know that you want to connect with us. If you live in a different state or another country, you can become an e-member of Bethel and you'll have the same rights and privileges as any other member that's here in Chicago Heights and in the building. You will have the same rights as an e-member and so connect with us. We want you to be most importantly we want you to be connected with Jesus and we want to help you grow in your spiritual journey. As we prepare our hearts now for to worship God in our giving amen. We're going to um, go before God in prayer as we prepare our hearts to worship God in our giving. Spirit of the living God we thank you for the gifts that you have blessed us with. We thank you for resources. We thank you for jobs and careers. And we thank you for businesses and side hustles, God, that put resources in our pockets. We pray now, God, that we will obey you and that we will bring the tithe into the storehouse, that we will honor you with the first fruit of our labor and bring the tenth to you. We ask you now to bless every offering, every tithe that is coming, and we ask you to multiply it. We ask you to continue to grow and expand our church and the work and reach that you have given us. We pray now, God, that you would get the glory out of all that we do, and we pray that lives are changed, communities are transformed, our region will be transformed, and ultimately, our world will be a better place because of what we are doing for the kingdom of God. Bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Let us stand all over the building as we prepare our hearts to come around to worship God in our giving. Our giving options are on the screen. If you want to text to give, you can text the word Bethel Chicago, one word, to 833-356-6067. That's 833-356-6067. 356-6067 if you want to text to give. If you want to give via um, the Givelify app, you can look for Bethel Baptist Church of Chicago Heights and you can give on the Givelify app. Uh, you can also use Cash App. Our cash tag is the dollar sign Bethel CCH and the number 20. The dollar sign Bethel CCH and the number 20. 20. You can also mail your tithes, your offering, your live, love gift of any amount to Bethel Baptist Church of Chicago Heights, 1303 Fifth Avenue, Chicago Heights, Illinois. Once again, happy birthday to all who celebrate birthdays in the month of April and those who are celebrating anniversaries. If you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary in April, wave your hand. Where my April folk at? I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. Amen. We got a bunch of April folk in here. Amen. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to our April babies. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Glory to God.
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So as we prepare uh, to conclude today's worship experience, I wanted to um, share with you all. Uh, Pastor Turner uh, is not here today, but uh, for those that don't know, she's not gone anywhere yet. Amen. But for those who may not know, uh, Pastor Turner, amen, is getting ready to get married in July. Amen. Amen. And we are happy for her. Amen. Uh, I am not going to announce who she's getting married to. I know that some may already know. Amen. And, and, and we want to let her make that announcement. But we want you to know that she's getting married uh, in July. And as she did when she came to Bethel. Amen. She followed her husband here. That's how she ended up at Bethel because she honored her husband by following him here. And in this instance, she's going, she's planning to do the same thing. Now, unless the Lord says something different and they agree on something different, that's what they have agreed to. And so we're expecting that she will be transitioning and following her husband. And we want everyone to encourage her. And while we hate to see her go anywhere, she's connected to us. Amen. We support her. We love her. And we want God to continue to use her. And we thank God for her honoring God's word. And so when you get an opportunity to see her or you call her this week, you can call her and encourage her and let her know how much you love her. And we'll let her announce the details of uh, her marriage, when and who, and all of that good stuff, we'll let her make that announcement. I, did, I, I took the opportunity to do it today so that she wouldn't get bombarded right after this announcement. So now you got all week to bombard her over the phone, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and everywhere else so that she don't get bombarded here at the church. Bombarded, amen, praise the Lord. And so we thank God for uh, Pastor Turner, and we want to continue to encourage her. Amen. Let us stand all over the building. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to uh, encourage you to join us this Wednesday in the building uh, for Bible study, amen, as we continue our series, The Ten Biblical Laws of Success, from the book written uh, by that same title and written by our very own executive pastor, Dr. Christopher Toot. Uh, we will pick that up um, and continue that on Wednesday. Uh, and we encourage you, come out and be in the room with us as we study this uh, phenomenal book and its blessing in a tremendous, tremendous way. If you don't have a copy of it, you can purchase a copy here at the church, at the Bethel Family Resource Center, or you can order your copy online along with the study guide now that has been published and comes along with it. Uh, it is also available here and online. Um, I want to, as we close, um, just thank God for uh, Dr. Toot. Dr. Toot continues to um, just do, do some extraordinary things. Uh, he's a, a, a humble servant, and so he doesn't talk about everything that he does, but he received an honor over the weekend for some of the work that he has been doing to bless the lives of many. And so... He received an, a, an award and, and, an, and a recognition uh, for that work. And we just thank God for the gift that he has placed among us in the person of Dr. Christopher too. And, and so we encourage you and thank God for you. Spirit of God, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. You are an awesome God. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. We thank you, Lord, for the transformation that's happening in the lives of your people. We thank you for the transformation that's happening in this community and in this region. We thank you for every person 
that's a part of that transformation. We thank you most of all, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who has transformed our lives and is now renewing our minds. We pray now, God, that as we go out of here, we will be doers of your word, not just hearers only, that we will hide your word in our hearts, that we might not sin against you. We pray, God, that as we go into the world, we will be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, letting others know that Jesus is Lord and salvation is available to all. In Jesus' name, let all of God's people say Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a great rest of your week. If you want to receive Jesus Christ, if you want to rededicate your life, if you want to make Bethel your home, meet us right up front. And